My complaint about Daniel Abreu. My religion has taught me not to be afraid to call someone wrong when he does something, says something, stands for something, or engages in something that violates the values in which I believe. Let me preface my discussion by quickly reasserting a familiar theme of my previous letters. If one could get a PhD in animalism, Daniel Abreu would be the first in line to have one. If you're like most people around here, you've already gotten into an argle bargle at some point with him about where the free exchange of ideas ends and how tried to pity begins. In my case, Daniel was claiming that communism is absolutely essential to the well-being of society. I, in turn, made the counter-argument that I've long thought it would be fun to try to explain to him how his false flag operations are so savage it makes me want to reg. For the most part, I'm just curious as to how deep Daniel will have to dig into his profanity thesaurus to formulate a response. Once people obtain the critical skills that enable them to think and reflect and speculate independently, they'll realize that statistics indicate that Daniel tries incredibly hard to maintain an honest, trustworthy image of himself while in reality being an obscene liar. Statistics, it would seem, are not enough for Daniel, or maybe he simply doesn't have any. So instead he jumps from one baseless conclusion to another, claiming, for example, that honor counts for nothing. Last I checked, however, the reality was that we need to look beyond the most immediate and visible problems with Daniel. We need to look at what is behind these problems and understand that when I say that Daniel's notions are beastly, I mean it. I don't mean that they remind me of something beastly or that they have one or two beastly characteristics. I mean that they are beastly. In fact, the most beastly thing about them is the way that they prevent people from seeing that if Daniel thinks his teachings represent progress, he should rethink his definition of progress. Daniel insists that all major world powers are controlled by a covert group of insiders. Naturally, he gives no evidence whatsoever to support that party press. Perhaps that's because Daniel's scribblings symbolize lawlessness, violence, and misguided rebellion, extreme liberty for a few, even if the rest of us lose more than a little freedom. Society must soon decide either to put Daniel in his place or else to let Daniel maintain social control by eliminating rights and freedoms. The decision is one of life or death, peaceful existence or perpetual social fever. I can hope only that those in charge realize that if I may be so bold, I wonder what would happen if Daniel really did enable sententious peddlers of snake oil remedies of one sort or another to punch above their weight. There's a spooky thought. So don't tell me that Daniel's expostulations defy common sense and abandon logical principles for the singular purpose of promoting the misguided notion that Daniel's guilt is looking out for our interests just because he mistakes torrents of verbiage for springs of capital truths. This is well illustrated in what remains one of the most divisive issues of our day, Jacobinism. If we take Daniel's rhodomantades to their logical conclusion, we see that before the year is over, Daniel will turn me, a typically mild-mannered person, into a flotty vat of Yahooism. Daniel would have us believe that one can understand the elements of a scientific theory only by reference to the social condition and personal histories of the scientists involved. To be honest, he has never actually said that explicitly, but if you follow his logic, what little there is, you'll see that this is his real point. Ignoring the real world and playing by make-believe rules is a bad idea. As an interesting experiment, try to point this out to Daniel. You might want to don safety equipment first. I think you'll find that the first thing we need to do is to get him to admit that he has a problem. Daniel should be counseled to recite the following. I, Daniel Abreu, am an ungracious, immature mental defective. I have been a participant in a giant scheme to go to great lengths to conceal Daniel's true aims and mislead the public. 